Okay, we are live. I think we're live. I'm gonna assume we're live and keep going. Oh, your webinar's now live on Facebook, good. Hi, I am Shiraz and this is Rewriting Reality. This is based off my book, How to Rewrite Reality, which is available on Amazon. In this program, I am going to discuss the concepts of how reality works and how you can make it work for you. We have some attendees that I'm going to uh, allow a chance to have their reality rewritten during the show. And first, I'm going to just sort of explain how things work here. So I call myself a reality shifting specialist. And what I do is I have conversations with people and when I talk to you, I can tell when your conscious beliefs match your subconscious beliefs. And whenever they don't, then you are lying. Now, I don't care if you're lying to me. I care if you're lying to you. Ooh, okay. And that's actually causing some shifts. Now, my body reacts when there are energy shifts that are going on. <coughs> and I tend to yawn and cough. So expect that during the show. Yeah, and there's a lot of shift. Just, just that whole statement that you are lying to yourself. Yes, you are often lying to yourself because what's happening is you think that you want something or something is good and things are going the way you want, but at a subconscious level, it's a completely different story. So you may say, you know, I'd really love to build my business up, but at a subconscious level, uh, you could have a story that if I'm more visible, then I'm going to be judged more. I don't want to be judged more. And so then when you get back to that conscious level, you're like, why is it my business growing? It's because the subconscious has more power. And it's hard to change your reality if you don't know what stories are running under the surface. So during those conversations I have with you, we'll bring up those stories and make you aware of them. And that gives you then the power to decide, okay, that's a story that's not working for me. And I'm going to step out of that story. So the process I do is when I, it's, it's very simple, is when we find out what a story is, I'm going to ask, are you willing to step out of that story? And if you say yes, and you mean it, then the story shifts. It's pretty cool. Now you have to mean it, because if you don't mean it, if you just say, yeah, you know, I'd like to step out of the story, but deep down, you don't really mean it, nothing changes. And one of the clues is that you see me react if the energy shifts, or you will react. Now, every person reacts to energy differently. Some people just don't feel it. Some most commonly people feel sort of like a swirly energy going through them as we do these shifts. And, but there's other things. Some people yawn, cough, burp, get hot, get cold, have muscle twitches. There's all sorts of things that can go on. So if you're going to call in, uh, be prepared for that. And, uh, I know this is a world where there's there's COVID going in. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be coughing a lot probably for the next hour, but that's not COVID. That's just how my body works. It's been doing this for years, so deal with it. And before I get to the people that are calling in, uh, a question came in about if you have a belief that you cleared years ago and Oof, that's causing people to react. Just that, that question that right there, we're not even done yet. And then all of a sudden you're having a similar situation. Does that mean that it is the belief coming back and you have to deal with it again? Or is it because some whole new set of circumstances is causing the same results to show up as when you had the old belief? So if the old belief was, um, it's not safe to more, make more than $50,000. And now you're making $100,000. And all of a sudden your money pro, um, flow goes back to $50,000. Does that mean the old belief resurfaced or is it a new belief? And the answer is yes. And sorry, my dog is coming in out of the room. I just gotta close the door. I don't know how we learned to open the door, but here we are. So yes, the answer is yes. It could be either. It could be that you have recreated that old belief because we are in choice. We are allowed to recreate any old beliefs we want 
if there's a reason that we feel it's good to have that belief. Now, the most common thing that happens is you've bought someone else's story or someone else's belief. So you may have gotten rid of that belief for yourself, but someone else walks in and they have that and you buy it. And it, it seems like crazy what you just buy it. Yeah, it's that easy. You can walk by someone and buy their story. You may not buy it permanently, but you may buy it in that moment. And oftentimes when we're interacting with people, you're buying your friend's stories or that person's stories and they're buying your stories. So if you've ever had a case of where, say you and Jim are talking about Bob and you say, well, it's, it's funny because Bob always acts this way. And Jim's like, no, Bob acts this way. It's because Bob is probably buying your story of who he is and buying Jim's story of who he is. And so he changes based on who he's with because he slips into that story. Now, he's probably not doing it consciously. But if you have a story about who someone is, then that's what happens. So, so going back to you have an old belief and the circumstances of the old belief show up it could be you just bought someone else's story. And the easiest way to check on that is ask yourself, well, is this story actually mine? And when you ask that story, if you feel a shift in either the energy or your feelings or physical sensations, then that's an indicator that's probably not yours. And if it's not yours, you don't need it. So you can say, you know what, I'm stepping out of this. I don't, I don't need this story. And apparently I just froze and I'm back. Okay. So that's, that's one way it can happen. The other thing that could happen is you've got a reason as to why you want that story back in your life. And I'll give you an example with this one. This just happened recently is that I used to have rheumatoid arthritis and I found out I had the belief that I have to be responsible for everyone in my life. And when that was pointed out to me and I said, and I said, well, that doesn't make any sense. What does that got to do with having arthritis? I said, well, if you don't want to be responsible, but you feel you have to be responsible, your solution was being in bed in pain. So you have the perfect excuse not to be responsible. And so, okay, that's how it works. So I decided I'm not going to be responsible for anyone else. And my arthritis went away like the next day, boom, gone, no pain, no inflammation. It was amazing. So the interesting thing that happened though is earlier this year, my arthritis started coming back. And I was wondering well, what's going on because I'm not stressed. I don't feel like I'm responsible for anyone. Why is this arthritis coming back? So why is the story returned? And as it turns out, I realized that a couple of weeks earlier, I realized that when I shower now, what had happened during the arthritis was I started shaving in the shower because that way the hot water is running over my body and loosening me up. So then I'm just shaving and loosening at the same time. And then I go on to the actual washing. And I never stopped that habit. And a few weeks before the arthritis started going back, I realized I don't need to be doing this anymore. I've been doing it for years now, but it just hit me. I don't need to be doing it. I'm actually just wasting water because there's no need to warm up my body. I've just been doing it because I enjoyed it. And so there was that guilt of me wasting water while shaving in the shower. And so, my go-to there was to recreate the arthritis so I'd have an excuse to keep shaving in the shower rather you know and it couldn't it couldn't be well just I like shaving in the shower and enjoying the warmth of the water that that wasn't legitimate enough in my subconscious mind I needed a more concrete reason to do it so it started bringing the arthritis back and when I realized that I had that thought and that was just before the arthritis started showing up I realized ah no don't need that belief get rid of that belief. And as soon as I did that, arthritis went away again. So similar things. It was that one was a different belief, but my body had created a go-to response. So yes, so it could be the same belief. It could be someone else's belief and it could be a new belief. And that's why these circumstances can show up for you. So you have to investigate it a little more and figure it out. Okay. So <laughs> okay, that's shifting for someone. Good. All right. Oh, and I see Happy Monday from Jessica. 
Happy Monday, Jessica. That was actually Jessica's question. So now we have some attendees. I'm gonna, if you want to get work done, I see all these attendees. If you wanna get work done, you can use the chat function to raise your hand. If you are looking at the Facebook Live, I am going to put the information there to join the Zoom call or call in if you have questions to ask. There we go. And that's my window. Oh, there we go. We have Jared. So I'm going to bring Jared on here. There you go. How are you doing? Ah, I'm getting there. Okay. Um, how am I doing? Uh, uh, better, the same, and different. <laughs> okay. Um, I kind of got that. Something along the lines of well, Mike and I were talking the last half hour and he was helping me exert some stuff. And I was working on the car accident that I had about 25 years ago where I got rear-ended and the pain was still there. And Mike kind of talked me through some things and we got perfect. Well, we got a really good result in releasing, releasing, releasing. And uh, Mike kind of sensed he was tuned in, so that was kind of good. Um, and we got rid of the pain, so that was kind of cool for my neck. Um, it has something to do with look, looking for attention or needing attention. Um, I don't know what that is. I'm looking for love or looking for just pure freaking attention because I didn't get any from my parents. Something along those lines. So Oof. Do you have to, hmm, sorry, there's, there's a few different things going on there. How important is that attention? Didn't even know I was doing it, so I don't okay. think it's important. Do you Go have ahead. to replace the attention you're getting with attention from somewhere else? No. See, that's not coming up true. So if you're trying to make a shift in your life and you're getting attention in from some certain area and you feel you, you have to get a certain amount of attention, you're gonna look for it from other people. When you realize you don't need the attention, you just have to function as you and move through things and if you get attention, that's fine. If you don't get attention, that, that's also fine. You're just going to do you and create your life. Then it makes things easier for you. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to replace the attention you have with other attention? Is attention love? Yes. Okay. And this is a very common belief that people have. Attention is not love. But oftentimes when you're young, you associate attention with love. And so even <clears throat> if people treat you badly, it's attention. You feel it's love and you try, try to create more of that in your life. So are you willing to destroy the belief that attention is love? Yes. <laughs> And is the, is the kind of love and attention you've been getting 
the same kind you have you feel you need to replace it with no so that's not coming up true so are you willing and it's all about comfort are you willing to destroy the belief that in order to feel comfortable you need to get the exact same kind of love and attention you're getting now from other places yep that's for sure <clears throat> Ooh. Ooh. Okay. How's that feel? Good, better, lighter. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh. There we go. And this is actually very common in that if you're getting attention, especially early on from your parents, and it's not good attention, they're very judgmental or they're very uh, restrictive, um, whatever, whatever the case may be in your individual situation, because when you're a kid, you're trying to figure out what love looks like, you look at what your parents are doing and say, and you decide, oh, this is what love looks like. So when you get older and you move on from that relationship into other relationships, in romantic relationships, you look for those same qualities. You don't do it consciously, but then you find yourself in this relationship and you're like, oh my God, this is, just feels exactly like it was with my parents. And even if you think, oh, I didn't like that feeling, it's comfortable. And so you've decided usually between the ages of one and six, what love looks like. And then you just try to recreate it and recreate it and recreate it. When you realize love can look like something else and love can be more expansive and without judgment, there's, it's actually impossible to judge someone and love someone at the same time, right? At the exact same time. So you have to watch for that. <laughs> But that's how you end up in those situations. Whew. Okay. We are going to go to another person now. Let's see. Here we go. Welcome, Mark. Hello. Hello. So I have been over the last almost two weeks doing a lot of shifting and a lot of changing and that's been very interesting. But one of the things that's been very weird and I can't put my finger on what it's related to. There is a muscle spasm back behind the sternocleidomastoid, like back in here. And I first thought that, oh, yeah, I slept wrong, yada, yada, it'll clear. And I did for a while. And then when things shift some days, it just seizes. And then later it'll clear. And I'm receiving the message. I just don't know what the message is. What's happening to you on those days? Well, like... Earlier today, we did a super intense call. I had lots of stuff move. Didn't happen at all. And yet, partway through this call, all of a sudden, poof, there it is. And I'm like, my challenge is that I'm aware of something. I'm not even sure if it's mine. And you're mm -hmm. right, I'm not remembering to ask. But I have no, I'm getting no connection as to what it's related to. And so... Okay, this is an interesting thing that's coming up. Are you monitoring someone else's shifts? Wow. There's a part of my mind screaming, no, 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 that's a silly thing to do. But the other part of my mind is going, yes. 
Okay. So why is it important for you to monitor someone else's emotional and energetic shifts? Interesting. I, um, Ow. <laughs> I I'm, yeah, all right. I'm wanting to know when the shifts are happening. Why is it so important for you to know when someone else is shifting? Uh, so that I see when and how energetic magic is being used. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what if you just monitor things through awareness <laughs> rather than physical <laughs> sensations? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to a very jiggly place. Kind of like, um, yes, um, yeah, yeah, that's um, kind of like how you had to give the explanation of I cough and that's how I process things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If this is the new, if this is the new Mark's body going, hey, there's a thing, notice this, <laughs> muscle crunch. Um, I think I'm willing to shift. I, is that you giggling? Yeah, okay, right. Peanut gallery over there, I can hear them. They're muted on the call, but I can hear them through the ether. They are giggling their head off. Um, yeah. Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that the best way to monitor people is through physical sensations rather than just awareness? Yes. <laughs> there's another side to this oh yeah well don't worry we're not done yet yeah okay all right yeah are you willing to destroy the belief that it's your responsibility to monitor the people around you yes <sighs> damn it i moved the bucket <sighs> <laughs> okay, how does that feel? There's one more part of it um, that I need. Uh, there's a need to be able to demonstrate to people that their stuff is shifting. Oh, and why is it so important that you demonstrate? <laughs> All that came up in my mind was ego, ego, ego. That's exactly right. <laughs> You win the prize. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to demonstrate? Ooh. Yes. Oh, wow. That's really already, it's moving though. That you need to demonstrate to people so they can see what you're capable of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And to clarify, if it do doesn't make sense, there's nothing wrong with demonstrating so people can see what you're capable of, so people can see what you do and understand what you do. But if you need to do it, then that's coming from ego. Okay. How's that feel? Oh, so much lighter. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Whew. And oh, we have one more hand up. There we go. Welcome, Arthur. Hi, Charles. What's going on? Um, these days, I'm noticing that there's something that I can't stop myself from doing mm -hmm. is to brag over every little accomplishment that happens. And this is really bad because it kind of, like for example, it makes my little brother unha unhappy about that. And also, but the rest of my family, the, my rest of my friends, they're just used to it. But I think that's ego. And I don't, 
I can't just, I, like, it just happens. I, I can never stop myself from just blurting out like, oh, I did this again, or I improved spiritually, or mm-hmm. like, this is actually a pretty big issue. And it kind of came up after that processing we did in the call, like half an hour ago. And um, they're somehow related. This processing of emotion in my stomach and cracking. I don't know why, but they're related and there needs, I need some help with this. So again, is it important that everyone, actually, is it important that everyone knows how awesome you are? Yes. Okay. So isn't one of your goals to be much more spiritual? Yeah. So you've got this conflict going on in that spirituality means letting go of ego but you want people to see how well you're doing spiritually, which puts you in ego. Yeah. Is there any point to being spiritual if no one else knows? Ouch. No. Okay. So then do you really want to be spiritual or do you just want everyone to think that you're spiritual? I actually really want to be spiritual. Okay. I want to let go of that needing other people to know it's not serving me. Okay. <coughs> so one of the things you said is you can't help it, which means your belief is you have no control over what your actions are. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Only when I, only, only related to the topic of bragging for everything else I'm fine. So for everything else, that's interesting because it's not coming up completely true. But we'll look at it with with the bragging though. So if you have the belief that you can't help yourself, you are going to constantly create that in your life. So Is being is being seen as spiritual more important than being spiritual? No, that's not coming up true. So that's that's where you get much of, much of the conflict. All right, and that's why you also initially you also said there's no point in being spiritual if no one knows. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. It's not really about spirituality. It's about being seen. What's going to happen to you if no one sees you? I'll die. Okay. So who taught you that belief? My schoolmates in primary school and high school and junior high school. Okay. So are you willing to step out of the story that if you're not seen, you'll die? Yes. (coughs) Actually, it's slightly different as well. Are you willing to step out of the story that if you're not seen, it's just it's just as good as being dead? Yes. <coughs> oh. If you don't tell people your accomplishments, do they count? No. Okay. Are you willing to destroy that belief? Yes. How many of the people you talk to do you try and 
help and shift and make more aware and spiritual? Everybody I talk to. Okay. And why is that? Because it's fun. Do they want you to do it? Half the people, yes. Okay. And the people that don't, do you do it anyway? I, I, I inch towards that. And then when I see resistance, I stop. Okay. So is it your responsibility to make everyone around you more spiritual? Yes. Okay. Are you willing to destroy that belief? Yes. That's not a real yes. What would your purpose in life be if you weren't trying to make everyone around you spiritual? And it would be just to make myself spiritual. Is that enough? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, yes. That's definitely a no. What is your ultimate goal in becoming spiritual? I want, I want to... I want to travel in the universe and play with energy in the different universes that exist and to, to, so that I don't have to be human. I want to see how it's like just to be pure energy and create a form to live in and like a tree or something and come back to be a human or, and change into a dog and just be able to play like a master. But you're doing that now. But not consciously. But this is the, the, right now you've created a body called Arthur and you're having a human experience as Arthur, mm -hmm. right? But what you really are is a viewpoint of the universe to have this experience as Arthur. Mm -hmm. Now the universe has a whole bunch of viewpoints. So it has a viewpoint of your mom. It has a viewpoint of a tree. It has a viewpoint of a dog. All that's all going on simultaneously. So you're doing that because you are connected to the universe. You are part of the universe. You're just only perceiving the world from Arthur right now. Okay. So as you get more and more spiritual, your perceptions open up. And it may not show up in that, oh, I'm just going to lose Arthur's body and then create another body that's energy or create, create myself as a tree. It could be that you just shift your perception. So, oh, this is what the tree's perception is. Oh, this is what the dog's perception is. Because you're doing all of that right now anyway. So is it about having the experiences or is it about feeling that, that power and that ability to just transform and play with energy and, and shift into a different universe? I would love the latter. Yeah. So the latter isn't, isn't about raising your awareness. The latter is, is about more like jumping into a VR simulation and trying all these things out and playing this game. So when you're trying to get to a higher level of, of enlightenment, when you're, when you're trying to increase your spirituality, it's about clearing out the crap that's in there so that you can really be in touch with everything around you. But a lot of times people get it mixed up and, and they, they want to do those physical things. I want to be able to move things with my mind. I want to turn my body into energy. I want to be able to do this. Those are what shows up as you clear out the crap. But when you're going for those initially, you're not actually clearing out the crap. You're just trying to make those things show up. And then you wonder why your journey isn't going right? It's going as slower or not at all. So, and a lot of, from what you're saying, a lot of being able to do that is also tied to, I want people to know that I can do that. I want to show people that I can do these things. And then again, that's all coming from ego. So, oof. so are you trying to become enlightened so you can do things that will make you feel wonderful. You know you can just feel wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, are you only gonna be happy when you get to that level of enlightenment? Yes. Okay. 
So notice that sentence implies you're not going to be happy now, mm -hmm. right? And one of the requirements of getting to those higher levels is to be happy. So you've created this paradox. I'm not going to be happy till I get there, but I need to be happy to get there. So I'm not going anywhere. Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you'll only be happy when you get to that level of enlightenment? Yes. <coughs> Okay, how's that feel? Mm. Feels really good. Okay, cool. All right, thanks for being on. Thank you. I lost track of that. There it is. So there's that. And we have someone else, Marie. Welcome, Marie, if she is in fact there. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Um, just, uh, I've been feeling extremely flat since after Wednesday. Just meh. Um, flat from my lower body feels heavy. It feels depressed. I, there's no motivation i just uh i've done the return to sender and nothing seems to shift or move i just say yeah i don't understand what's what this is i don't know maybe there was big shifts on wednesday and it completely resisted and all the walls came up maybe i don't know okay the first uh, question is that your story which one that you're feeling flat. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. It's just there was an overwhelming amount of love and joy on Wednesday, and then the next day was just like meh. Okay. And then it kind of continued. Okay. Um, so when I just, it's beautiful out here. Like, I, I'm usually I got a big smile on my face and. Mm -hmm. My natural resting face is usually, you know, just kind of a smile. And I can feel like I've got, for the first time in my life, a resting bitch face. <laughs> and that's not me. <laughs> okay. Uh, walking somewhere? Yeah, I, I, needed to, I needed to move. Because your mic is uh, banging against something. It's making a picking noise through the mic. Okay, I'll just, I'll stop. How's that? Much better. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, the first thing that's coming up is, do you need a purpose? Yeah, I feel that very much. Okay. So you feel you don't have a purpose right now? What's that? You feel you don't have a purpose right now? Well, I thought I did. I was pretty excited with daily life and doing the things that I was doing or not doing and just being. Okay, so let's just see what's going on in the subconscious truth. Do you have a purpose right now? No, no, yeah. right now. I don't okay. Know. Which doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> so can you be happy if you don't feel you have a purpose right now? I've been trying to roll with it and just let it be what it needs to be in over the last few days, but nothing has sort of like let up. Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you can't be happy if you feel you don't have a purpose right now? Yeah. Yes. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Mm 
Okay. So did anything happen on Wednesday before you started feeling this way? No, it was a great day. It was my birthday. And it made me think it's like, okay, it's not exactly how I pictured it in my mind. Yeah. But the amount of love and gratefulness was just the same as it would be on the other birthdays that I have. It was so beautiful, okay. you know? Um, Are you sad because it's not your birthday anymore? Oh, I wanted to say no, but yes came up. Yeah. So do you need to remain sad until it's your birthday again? No, but you know, I think it's because intermittently I got to see people <laughs> yeah. and it's going from not seeing people to seeing a few people intermittently and to like nothing, you know, it's like, it was like a fast, like a, you know, a feast or famine. Okay. So because you're not seeing people now, are you in famine? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and so it's just... You know, I'm just kind of tired of all this now, to be honest with you. Okay. So then that's, that's where we are. That's what's, what's causing it. So are you willing? Oh, so have you decided you are not going to be happy until this is over? Yeah. You know what? That, that statement feels true. Yeah. So are you willing to destroy that belief? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think I'm just mad at myself and everyone else for co-creating this and, you know, bigger questions not being asked, you know, like the numbers that are put out there. It's like, oh, well, were they tested in that week or were they tested two, three weeks ago? You know, is that, mm -hmm. that makes a big difference on how people out there who are already in fear, you know, end up in some more fear. Yeah. <sighs> but what you need to focus on is what makes you happy, not what's going on with everyone else. Yeah. So, are you willing to forgive everyone else for living in anger and fear? Ow! I know. <laughs> <a> big no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, as long as you're upset with people for the reality they're creating, you're not going to be happy and you're going to keep feeling this way. When you allow them to go through what they need to go through, then it's going to ease things up in your world. You don't have to agree with them. You just have to allow that everyone's got their own journey to go on. Yeah, and, and I do, like, I understand and, and that everyone's feelings are, are valid. Mm -hmm. It's just more on a government level. It's like, you know, could you actually give the correct information and more of the information around all the numbers because the people are not ignorant you know if you express the bigger picture they will understand so the government has to behave in the right way for you to be happy that's for everybody else <laughs> So you are the champion for everyone else to make sure the government behaves. Is that it's, it's an interesting little thing you're creating here. Yeah, I guess. Wow. So, okay. Are you not allowed to be happy when other people aren't getting the information and the care that they need? Yeah, that's probably it. Cause I had so much joy and happiness a few days ago and then, you know, onwards to that day. Okay. So, and this is, this is a tough subject because it's like some people feel guilty being happy while other people are suffering. And while you want compassion for what other people are going through, 
when you lower your happiness, remember that stories are all shared, they're all contagious. So lowering your happiness to meet everyone else doesn't allow them to buy your story of happiness and raise themselves up. So the better state you are in, the more of a place of joy you're in, the more that story can broadcast out to other people, they can buy it and come up to that level as well and get out of suffering. But they need that example, they need that beacon. And keep in mind, it's not about forcing that energy out there. It's just about saying, you know what? I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna be as happy as I can, despite what's going on here. And let's just see what happens. And if people wanna buy my story, that's amazing. If they don't, then that's, that's their choice. So, Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Are you willing to destroy the belief that it's wrong for you to be really happy when people are suffering? Yes. <laughs> are you willing to destroy the belief that you have to balance out your happiness with sadness or ooh, feelings of feeling down? Yes. Okay, how's that feel? Excuse me. Yeah, clearing. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anything else? No, no. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Okay, and that is an important one in that it can often just feel wrong to be happy while things like this are going on in the world. But remember, if more and more people are happy, it changes the overall frequency of the world. And when more people get to that happy place, when more people raise their frequency, everyone else starts to come out of the place that they're in. Now, it doesn't mean you stop being compassionate. It doesn't mean that if someone's like right next to you, you're like laughing your ass off, even though they're in pain or suffering. It just means getting to this place of true joy in yourself that will just shine out and affect everyone else. And the more you can get yourself to that place, the more it's going to help you and the more it's going to help everyone around you. And it's, it's an amazing phenomenon to watch. And I've watched this for people that are in joy, and I've watched this for people that are in anger, and I've watched this for people in, in sadness. All these stories are contagious. But here's the thing. The most powerful story wins. So the more powerfully you can get into this place of joy, the more powerfully you'll affect everyone. And, and I and I got to come back and say, and it's not about pushing that energy out to make everyone change. It's, it's like when the sun is shining in the sky, it's, it's not saying, you know what, I need everyone to notice me and I need to just make people burn. Um, or maybe in the desert, it might feel like that. But, you know, generally, we don't look at the sun and say, oh, I can feel that sun trying to make me feel better. It's just you go out there and you're like, oh, yeah, and especially right now. And in Canada, in northern the United States, the sun's been out, the temperature's been up, and everyone's just like, yes, and feeling great. But there's no push to feel that. You just do it. It just comes out naturally. And you want to do that with your energy so that people around you just naturally go, oh, I just feel better now. And watch what happens when more and more people do this. It'll get us out of the place that we're in right now. And beware of other people's stories. Notice if you've been doing well and you suddenly have a shift, did you buy someone else's story? Whew, good. <coughs> okay, it's causing some shifts out there. 
I love it when I feel shifts from the audience and I'm not actually talking to anyone. Okay. Sorry, there's just a little bit of energy moving there. Okay. So how are we doing? We're almost done. So to finish up, I just want to continue a little bit more on fairness. A lot of people have this concept of what's fair and what's not fair. And I've seen things like people wanting to build a business and earn money and, and do these things. But they worry about the people that are suffering and aren't doing that well. So we'll look at it this way. So say there's the energy of money and that energy of money wants to go someplace. And you would like to have that energy of money, but you think, you know, I shouldn't take it. So I'll let it go to someone more deserving. And how that shows up, um, if the money was to show up for you was you land a new client or you get a, a raise at your job or you win some money someplace, however it wants to show up any different way it'll show up. But you say, no, it's gotta to go to someone more deserving. And again, this may not be a conscious thing. You may be struggling and, and thinking, I gotta build my business, I gotta do well, but the money isn't showing up. It's because at a subconscious level, you know, the money should go to someone more deserving than me. I may be struggling, but there are people struggling way more than me. So you actually cause that energy of money not to show up in your life. And it goes someplace else. So say it goes to someone that feels that's even struggling more, but they're, struggling and they're in a story of struggling. And if they have that money show up, it's gonna shift them out of that story of struggling. But if they enjoy it, if they're solidly in that, that story, then they don't want that money to show up either. So it misses them. And then it could go to someone else that's struggling even worse. And then the same thing happens. So this energy that's out there, because everything is energy, that money wants to show up in someone's life. And it's just looking for people to show up. And then finally you get to someone that's got a lot of money and it's like, oh, there's more money, I'll take it. And then they just take that money and, and the money shows up for them. And this happens all the time. And it's based on your beliefs. So when you're trying to be fair and, and thinking, you know, there are people that deserve more and better and, and that things have to be fair, then you're actually pushing away opportunities to have uh, to have money, to have great experiences, even to have great relationships. You can be pushing away relationships because you think some persons have had a whole bunch of horrible relationships. And why should you have a good relationship while they can't even get one? We do this for everything, not just money. When you are willing to let everything show up for you, because the world is fair in that it reflects back every story every person has, whether it's good or bad, there's no judgment from the universe. It's just like, this is what your belief is here, have it. So when you're willing to change your beliefs that I'm, I'm willing to have a wonderful relationship show up, I'm willing to have great health in my life, I'm willing to have lots of money show up in my life. And that's fine, it has nothing to do with what anyone else is doing. If they want to be in a place where they are suffering and that's where they are. So, it's all fair in that way. See what starts to show up when you realize that at a macro level, everything actually is fair. There is no unfairness in the world. The way we look at it from a human point of view, we can see all sorts of unfairness. People being out of jobs that, that are really good people, people that have lots of money getting more money and why do they need it? There's all these stories going around. But when you look at each individual's underlying stories and, and see that that's all that's happening is they're being reflected at it back at them, then everything is fair. And then if you want to go even further out, if we're all just viewpoints of the universe, then we are every single person out there. So we are part of that experience of everyone. And if you take everyone and all their experience, put it and, and take that whole combination, that the cumulative result, it all balances out. So it's still fair. So that's how I want to start, you to start looking at fairness because then you can start creating for your life and not worry about whether it's fair to other people. Of course, you, know, you want to be 
deliberately trying to be unfair to people, but <laughs> understand that life is always fair. And the more you get that, the more you'll allow to show up in your life. Whenever you feel life isn't treating you fair, look for the beliefs that are causing that to show up and get rid of them. Okay, cool. So we just got a message that according to what I've posted on other channels, this program is actually going to both five o'clock and six o'clock. No, that's not happening. We're done. So I'll have to correct those posts later on. For, the, for next month. We will be back next month, last Monday of the month, right here. And there is also Ask Crystal on the breakthrough. And she's here Thursdays, Thursdays at 10 a.m. I believe that's the right, right time. So tune in for her show. It's great as well. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next month. Ooh, look at that. Happy faces and hearts. Thank you. And uh, it's been fun. If you want more information from me, go to shirazshifts.com. We have events coming up and uh, programs that are going on. I invite you to be a part of them. And you have an amazing month. Be well, be aware, and be magical.